Hello and welcome to another episode of Build Back Better. I'm Dawn Lyle from For The Region and thank you very much for tuning in to our series of online conversations with inspiring people, projects and change makers across South West Wales. Today we're talking about the menopause. We don't talk enough about the menopause and uh, it's a hot topic at the moment. So I'm delighted to introduce you to Jane Woodman, who is founder of something called the Menopause Team. Welcome, Jane. Lovely to be talking to you. Thank you very much, Dawn. It's great to be here. So tell us a little bit about how you came to found this organisation and why do you think this is such an important issue that we should be talking more about? OK, so in terms of my background, um, I'm a human resource manager professionally or certainly was for a long time. So I worked in manufacturing in South Wales. And I, I could see people in that environment, women of a certain age, maybe struggling. And I, I didn't really know what the answers were at that time. Um, and then from there, I moved into academia and I was able to do some research and I began to see the links. And I thought that it would then be a great opportunity to actually develop a business that would help women flourish really at work. Um, the midlife has got negative connotations and people are searching around for solutions and often not being signposted in the right directions. So I tried to be that conduit, if you like, that would just signpost people. You know, I'm not medically qualified myself, but the organization that I'm involved with, we signpost people so that they can find answers for themselves. I was watching a documentary on Channel 4 recently, hosted by Davina McCall, and it was a real eye-opener for me, um, raised my awareness a lot about the challenges that women face, but particularly the challenges they face because it's a sort of taboo subject that we don't talk about enough. And one of the things that came through in that documentary was about how many women quit their jobs or give up work at this time. And it must be a real, that's a real loss to the workforce. So the figures are one in four women considers leaving their role, one in 10 leave. So that's a huge loss for organisations. But it's a huge loss for women, you know, economically, socially. If we put it into context of that one in four considers leaving, then, OK, maybe they've had enough. Maybe they've worked somewhere 20, 30 years and they want to do something different. But if they're just leaving their roles because they haven't got the support from their organisation, then, then that really isn't on. And, and this is where that knowledge raising is important, not just for women themselves, but for the organisations in which they work. So team leaders, managers, senior leaders, they all need to be aware. They don't need to solve the problems, but they need to help women find out how to solve the problems for themselves. Um, and if you think of potentially women have gone through childbirth, so maybe their careers have been stalled a little bit, and just as they're perhaps getting back on track, then perimenopause hits and, and they don't know what to do. You know, brain fog, lack of concentration, anxiety, lack of confidence, but all of those have got solutions. Um, and, and you don't need to be suffering. And, and perhaps that's something that I could just briefly talk about is that suffering in silence. There's no need, there are solutions out there. And when I give sessions on this topic, I talk about the researcher, Brené Brown. Have you heard of Brené? Now she's got some great talks, videos, you don't have to read her work, but one of her specialisms is vulnerability. And perhaps talking about the menopause makes you feel vulnerable. But the reality is that other people will see that as a strength. So if you can engage with a bit of Brené, get your confidence up, and then just talk about it to anybody and everybody. Um, and it, I think it allows then people to be you yourself, maybe for your family, your children. You know, your children might cut you a bit of slack if, if they understand what's happening. So, yeah, it's important in terms of education for all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm really trying myself to um, 
to do exactly as you say and uh, to just talk about to talk about it and um sort of just bring it up in conversation and I can see particularly sort of younger men in those conversations suddenly are a bit like oh why, why is she talking about the menopause um but I'm trying to do it in order to break down those taboos and to think well when their wives or girlfriends or colleagues yeah. are going through it if I've made it something that that I feel confident to talk about and that they hear more about it just helps everybody doesn't it when I said to my brother oh you know I think I might be perimenopausal he sort of looked a bit shocked and he said oh I'm sorry as if I told him you know my cat had died or something and um but he'd probably never heard anybody talk no. about menopause before yeah, so I we can all right. be change makers in mm, that way yes. can't we Yes, absolutely. Because if you think of it historically, I don't know about you, but in many families, mothers and daughters don't talk about this type of thing. Grandmothers, aunts. So it's not even a private conversation. It just hasn't been a conversation. Um, rather brilliantly, Carolyn Harris MP brought this up as a conversation in Westminster Hall yesterday. So it is now becoming a conversation. And we can look to these people, you're right, and see this change happening positively. But in, in terms of this broader conversation, it's in all our interests to find answers and to understand so that we can carry on with our best lives. And I think what you've said about the importance, um, the value that is lost if, if women don't feel able to continue in their careers or lose mm. confidence you know we need more women leaders in all mm. our organizations and we need to keep women in those careers because women are making the world better they make companies better they make yeah. communities better and they're changing the world so whatever we can do as as organizations to keep women in those roles and yeah. as they progress through their careers they're often in quite senior leadership roles yeah it's so important yeah. exactly exactly um and and as i try and keep saying to organizations it's not about you solving things it's about you signposting so have posters up have books around have leaflets just so that people begin then to pick up this information for themselves have that culture of openness that's what I was going to ask next, really. What are some of the practical things that you would like to see more employers doing? How can an employer become a sort of menopause friendly organisation? So it, it isn't that difficult. It is about having visual aids, if you like. So posters in perhaps cafes, in organisations, canteens, um, other cloakroom areas you might have a reception area you could have books in there that you know there are a variety of books around that people could flick through um magazines magazine articles so just so that people begin to see that conversation in written format but often organizations will put things up on their websites on their intranets they might have a senior leader who's prepared to blog about their menopause experience. You and I could do that too, <laughs> to set the ball rolling. Um, so just these conversations, these visual reminders, and, and that the, starts a conversation. Some organisations have menopause cafes. So maybe once a month, women gather together, whether that be in person or on Zoom and discuss it. The, the trouble with that, I mean, that, that is hugely positive. However, if you call it a menopause cafe, only women who identify with the menopause will attend. So the other information is important because often women do not link their symptoms to the menopause. You know, if they're crushingly tired, um, way more anxious or stressed, they might think they've just got depression or... They, they might not necessarily understand the symptoms of perimenopause, for example. So to have these signposts around allows women to start to make links. And there are a lot of employers out there who've got wellbeing programs, maybe are offering uh, mindfulness sessions, yoga sessions. All of that is a great help. 
So it's not about employers doing things necessarily or doing more. It's just about facilitating what they already have and then putting information out there. Yeah, I think what you've said there about women not noticing or not realising that they're experiencing perimenopause mm, mm. and maybe attributing other causes or just mm. generally thinking that they're having a low patch yes. um, or yes. experiencing more anxiety, and especially this year when we've all got so many reasons to feel anxious, anxious. and overwhelmed. <laughs> exactly. um, but we don't talk about it as younger women and so I think it's important um you know it's not just a conversation behind closed doors with women who are going through it but actually that it needs younger women to have more awareness of what's going on. yeah you know I've I've only turned 40 this year and I I hadn't ever really even thought about menopause or heard anyone talking about it certainly never had the conversation with my own mother or anyone I know really mm -hmm. so somehow bringing it into the light and helping us all recognize oh maybe that's why I'm feeling that way and maybe maybe I you know maybe there is support out there mm. or help that I could get you know what would your advice be to women who are perhaps listening to this and just starting to think you know maybe this is relevant for me so I would go to some evidence-based websites so the British Menopause Society has a great patient web section and that'll give you really good up-to-date research because if you just google menopause lots of things come up and there are companies out there that want to sell you things and you don't really need to buy anything you you just need to understand so um and then there's a private doctor who you don't necessarily need to go and see, but you could again engage with her web pages. This is Louise Newsom. Now that program that you watched on Channel Four with Davina McCall, Louise Newsom was on there, and so I think she's got trusted web pages that that will help. So you also then, as you maybe come into your late thirties, forties, need to consider your own self care, and and what are you doing to look after yourself. And, and I think as you perhaps are going through your 30s and life is really busy, you put your own self-care on hold and you maybe see it as a bit of an indulgence. So that's really a strategy that you need to start to develop so that by the time you get to mid 40, you really are caring and looking after yourself and, and spending time doing that, not giving out to everybody else, but taking time for yourself. So it really is about self-care and about education for yourself because going to your GP isn't necessarily going to give you the answers they're, they're not particularly well trained in this area generally you, you could be lucky and you might find a brilliant GP but for a lot of women the GP experience is not positive but it does need to happen so it's about having education for yourself and then when you go to the GP even printing off web pages and taking them with you and saying, this is what you want to discuss. Um, and perhaps taking somebody with you because maybe you've got to this point where you are feeling a bit low and you don't want to necessarily tussle with a GP by yourself. Um, so taking a friend or a partner can be positive. So it's that developing knowledge. It, it's an awkward one, isn't it? Because there's not, usually we just look to the medical profession but in this case, we also need to look to ourselves in terms of research and care. That came through really strongly in the Davina McCall documentary. Somebody said, you know, this is really a feminist issue. If men went through the menopause, yes. they'd have solved it by now. And, um, you know, the sort of scandal, really, of, of how ill-informed so many mm. GPs are oh. and they haven't had the training and they don't have the knowledge to advise women properly and so many women get prescribed antidepressants before anyone's even mentioned the menopause. menopause. Yeah. So there are 13 million men menopausal women in the UK and 143 menopause specialists so you don't have to be a maths expert to, to know that that doesn't work out well for, for us menopausal women. So if you can be proactive and engage with information and educate yourself, then when you finally get that precious appointment, you're going in there armed with what you want. 
Yeah, I mean, and it is one of those things, isn't it, where the information is out there, the resources are out there, but it's knowing yeah. where to look. Yeah. I think um, Louise, the doctor that you mentioned, I think she's something like menopause doctor on Instagram as yeah. well. So yeah. Uh, yeah. the information yeah. is out there and there are yeah. some amazing women doing great work, including yeah. yourself. So uh, that's really important. I mean, in Wales, well-being at work has become such a big theme hasn't it and mm. um and with the well-being of future generations act you know it's on everybody's lips in fact later on this evening i'm hosting a conversation about um well-being employers with the well-being economy alliance so i think my question was where where does the well-being of future generations act come into all of this so i think that's a brilliant platform for us in wales in order to launch ourselves forward. And I, I frequently refer to that act. And, and I think that then promotes the resilience of Wales and, and really focuses on health being part of our resilience and menopause therefore being part of that so that women are really operating at their best, if you like, um, both prefer personally and professionally. Yeah, I think, you know, there are the seven well-being goals and a healthier Wales is certainly one of them. I think Wales has the potential, doesn't it, to really lead the way in how we're yeah, prioritising exactly. our well-being. Um, and yes. it's so great to see employers embracing that. And I suppose all the different ways, whether it's being disability confident or, you know, empowering um, equalities in the workplace and making sure women have access to the knowledge and the support that they need to stay in their careers and, and operate at their best is so important. And the Welsh Government are really trying with this. Um, so, for example, through Academy Wales, I run sessions for them twice a month on the menopause. They're free to members of Academy Wales. So, yeah, I would encourage as many people as possible to be part of those awareness sessions. And if I were an employer listening to this or an, a large organisation, um, how can I access your support through the menopause team? Do you offer um, workshops for companies? Yeah. How do you yeah. practically yeah. support? So I run workshops both on Zoom and in person, a 90 minute awareness session. If you wanted, for example, an article for a company magazine, then yeah, I'd be happy to do any of that. Amazing. Well, I think it's such a great no, it's great to be talking about it today. It's become personally relevant to me and I'm really keen to be part of the solution in any way that I can. So I'm certainly really grateful to you, Jane, for taking the time to come and talk to us and encourage all our listeners to look up the menopause team and uh, become menopause confident and make sure you're talking about it as much as you can. And if you are an employer or an organisation, then all those things that Jane has suggested, practical steps, um, and certainly the support that Jane can offer to make sure your organisation is really doing the best for the women in your care. But thank you, Jane, for taking the time. I know we've had a few connection problems this morning, but uh, thanks for bearing with us on that. This is the world we live in now, so a bit challenging. And thanks to all our listeners for tuning in. I hope we've had some men listening as well as women and young and old. And I hope this has given you something to think about uh, how you can make a difference in your organisation do hit subscribe and drop us a comment reach out to jane woodman at the menopause team and tune in again next week for another conversation from us here at for the region bye for now